some of the coolest animals ever to walk earth. You have a beautiful family. You know, you're a black belt in jujitsu. I mean, you're a, you're a man's man. You know, you build stuff. You're, you're very intelligent. You're a pastor. You know, you're, you're an educator. You're, you're very smart, very wise. So give us, give, give the world what you've given me, Austin, and every, this guy's squeezing her crap out of right down too. It's getting like in a full Nelson. But uh, yeah, man, give us, give us some words of encouragement. Give us some words of advice. Talk to us about God. Talk to us about anything you want. I'm here to listen. Okay, so if if I was have if this was my last um, time ever talking to anybody, if this is my last interview ever, and and um, there's a book in the Bible called Second Timothy, and it's when the Apostle Paul was getting ready to die, and he wrote a letter to his son. Uh, he had a spiritual son named Timothy, and he wrote this letter, and he said the last thing I want you to know. So it's like the last thing somebody might say is that. If you will love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, he will bring you to the highest of highs and take you up at the lowest of lows. There is nothing that you and God cannot handle together. You and God make a majority. And the ability that I've been given, the ability that you, Mike, have been given to look at these animals and, and to see beauty. Some people look at animals and they freak out. They, they, they look at a, a, a monkey. They look at a snake. They look at a whatever and they freak out. But the, the, the ability that you have to recognize, to look at the scale of a snake, the smallest of details and see the fingerprint of God to just to look and see how some of the cream turns into white and some of the white then flex off into yellow and then explodes into red yeah and just the, the dynamic way that the paintbrush of god has painted these animals and that's a gift and i think every kid that's watching should should be encouraged to to bring that out to to duplicate it to to make a living off of it to follow your dreams and and never let anybody tell you you can't i think that if, if there was anything that could be said, I, I cannot stress enough how my family told me that I was crazy, that I had to go to college, how, how people that are around me all doubted what you can do. And if you will just, and, and here's the, you know, the key, like I, like I told you since you were a kid, Mike, just work hard at what you love. You can't, you can't just love it. It's not like, well, I really love snakes, or I really love fighting, or I really love jujitsu. You can't just love it. You got to work at it, man. You got to work at it. Daily. You got to take day. responsibility for your own actions. Amen, man. Amen. I love you, man. I, I, I mean, I, I got so lucky to be played. You, you, you adopted me, what, 11 years ago? Mm. 11, 11 years ago, I moved down to Florida. And my life has completely changed. My, my mental has completely changed. My spirits changed, you know, and it's, it's been an honor, man. I could, I could never, I could never thank you enough. You know, I, I always tell you all the time how much I love you, how much I appreciate you, but I mean, you, you, you know it, you feel it, you know, you not only have you changed my life, you changed a lot of people's lives around you, you know, including yourself. You know, you tell, you tell me stories, or you tell the church stories, how, you know, how you, you came from New York when you were 19, 16, 17 years old, you know, driving down here with no license, you know, sleeping on your, your aunt's couches and stuff and, you know, going out of jail when you were in New York, doing crazy stuff that all of us do today, you know, and, and the man you are today, you know, a father of, you know, beautiful daughters and, you know, Bubba, you know, you know, you got grandkids out the wazoo. It's just uh, it's amazing, man, how, how you transformed your life, you know, and even my life, my life, you, you literally have changed my life. You changed my family's life. I, you know, because of you, I, I'm able to move my mom and my brothers down here. You know, I'm able to survive. You know, you've been you've been my dad. You know, and uh, I don't say that I don't say it to anybody. I don't say that lightly. You know, you know you know how much I love my pops. You know, and when he was gone, I was I was lost. You know, and you gave me that guidance. You gave it to me through God. You know, and you gave it to me through example. And I can't I can't I can't thank you enough, man. Especially publicly, I've been dying to get you publicly to talk so people can feel you too. You know, you're 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 a great teacher, and and, and you're a, you're a better student of life. You know, the way you regurgitate things and you read it and, and give it back to us, 
I, 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 from reading the Bible. You know, I have plenty of people read, you know, I go to church plenty, many years before, you know, I, I had the time to go to church with you, but I never could understand it. But the way you, you know, you, you read it and then you break it down and regurgitate it, it's like always so spot on, man. You know, and, and not only do you do that in church, you do that with animals. You know, you do that with MMA, you do that with boxing, you know, jujitsu. It's just, it's amazing, man. You know, and I just, I salute you, man. I love you. To death do us part and to eternity, you know, I'll go to war with you for you. Forever. I love you so much, man. Um, can you send us off with a nice prayer? Yes. Oh, Father God, I cannot thank you enough for, for my son. And I ask you to bless him with a spiritual blessing, a, a blessing of favor and a blessing of hope and a continued blessing of success. And God, for all those that are watching now, God, all the things that we said and all the things that we relayed, God, may, may the one thing stick in their hearts, and that is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. God, we want to give you thanks for the amazing animal kingdom that you've created. Uh, we thank you so much that your word says that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And like the rivers of water, he turns it any way he wishes. And God, as, as a people, we're called by your name. We, we pray for this uh, FWC people and the governor and all these people that are being hurt and, and losing business through um, the decisions that are being made. And God, we're not asking for our way. We're asking for your will. Your will be done and your kingdom come. And if it's your will that we get out of business, God, you've taken care of us this far. God, I always love when I hear preachers say God's taking you this far and he's not going to drop you now. And we believe that, God. So for all those that are watching here that have a dream, may their dreams be alive in their heart always. We love you, Lord Jesus. And we pray these things only in your name. Amen. 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 Ah, man, I love you so much, man. Love you. Thank you, guys. See you later. Do this again soon. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, Instagram live. Uh, that right there is my pops, man. You know, I know we, I'm black and he's white. Don't matter. You know, skin color don't matter. Everybody's one. We're all humans. You know what I'm saying? Um, that, you know, this guy really changed my life. You know, uh, the reason why I am. Uh, Tarzan, as you know, he, 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 he definitely gave me all the tools to be successful in life, to be disciplined, to be dedicated. I mean, very, very hard on me, you know, wasn't easy on me. And, he, and, and I, I told him I didn't want to be, I don't, I don't want an easy way, you know, and uh, he, he, he guided me to where I need to go. Till this day, I call him all the time for, for advice, you know, for anything animal related, anything personal related. I mean, he's my, he's my go-to guy. You know, and I can't think of enough. You know, it makes me emotional to be able to finally talk to him, especially publicly. You know, I talk to him all the time, but you know, it's a it's a, it's an amazing thing to have such a, a a strong guidance in life because you know I need it. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs someone older than you that has more wisdom, that has more uh, intelligence, that has more history on Earth than you do. You know, and uh, we we're young. I'm young, man. I'm only 28. That guy's like, I don't know, he's probably like 95 or 96 or something now. But, um, you know, he's lived triple, quadruple the life I, I've ever lived, you know. So when, when I asked him questions, he's seen it, he's done it. He's been it 10 or 15 times more than I have, you know. And uh, I take those, those words of wisdom, and I don't take them lightly. I take it to the heart. I sit on it. I let it marinate, you know, and I, I, uh, I, I write it down. Um, I, I breathe it. I, I pray about it. You know, I sleep on it, and then I act on it, you know, and um, – yeah, man. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, that was a uh, that was good. That was fun. I got my, one of my snakes here, just look, just literally chilling in my lap. She's a sweetheart. Um, but yeah, man, I'm gonna definitely post this so you guys can see it. Um, and it'll stay up there for forever. And uh, yeah, who else can we add in? We'll add a couple more people in and say what's up. Uh, let's see, this guy wants to join. Oh. Uh, don't let me add anybody else in. Well, hey, what's up, Lao? Hola, mamacita.
answer a couple more questions. If anybody got any questions while I'm here, let's do it. Uh, someone asked, when are you going to have a TV show on Netflix? Uh, I spoke to uh, a few uh, production companies and big networks over the last two years, you know, and I actually spoken to them more than two years, but, um, you know, trying to pitch a travel show the last two years during the pandemic where no one's able to travel, no one's able to do anything. It was kind of difficult, you know, so those things are, re, you know, recircling back. But I mean, when I first started going viral on Instagram, you know, these, these companies are telling me, hey, don't travel yet. You want to, you know, get your first reactions out there in the wild and jungle. And those conversations and those meetings would take weeks and weeks to happen and months to happen. And I just saw life passing by. I'm like, man, I can't, I can't wait. You know, so I started traveling and I don't know, like, kind of like if it like made them not want to work or be a little slower. I don't know. I don't uh, I don't really just like wait around. I just like to go and do my own thing, especially that I have the, the legal jurisdiction that, you know, I didn't have a passport before. So now that I got a passport, I'm able to just go places and meet new people and different organizations and different resorts and, uh, and just go have fun, man, you know. So hopefully one day we can do a, a nice show on a platform. But, you know, in, in the sense of animals, there's not like a, it's not a timeline, man. It's not like a, it's not a season. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a deadline. You know, I mean, you can look at David Attenborough. He's about 90, he's actually 90 something years old. Um, Jane Goodall is very, very up there. And I'm not saying these people are old, but I'm saying they've been doing it for a long, long time. So again, I'm 28. I may not get a TV show until I'm 35, you know, until I'm 38, you know. I got nothing but time. I got, I'm, I'm in no rush, you know. Um, I can still go out and walk outside and see, you know, manatees in the bay, in Biscayne Bay, you know. That's a, that's a blessing for me, man. Um, I can go outside and see iguanas. That's a blessing for me, man. I don't have, you know, I don't have this. Uh, I, I had in my life before all this stuff happened, oh, I want to be on TV. I want to do this. But it's like. You know, God bless you with other things to do. You know, he's still blessing you, with, again, with a passport to be able to go and meet people and, you know, see new places, swim in different oceans. It's been a, it's been a blessing, man. So I can't sit here and say, oh, I want to have this, this show. I, 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 I've, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. You know, it, I will still be the same exact person I am today, the same person I was five years ago, the same person I've been for 28 years, you know, so. Um, it will probably motivate me more during that time to like, I don't know, probably get more in shape or study more, you know, harder for each episode going to certain countries. But, ah, you know, I'm just, again, I'm, I'm taking my time. I'm still learning so much stuff. Um, I know you guys look at me like, oh, this guy knows a lot about animals. I don't know a thing. I don't know nothing. There's so much to be learned. There's so much to be absorbed. There's so much more knowledge to be taken in. That I'm just an open book trying to just fill in information. I mean, I got a book over here, right? It's called The Atlas. One of, one of my many books I keep at the house. Um, I mean, look how thick this thing is. This is straight up animals, okay? Like animals, just nonstop information. So, I mean, until you read about 500 of these thick books, and this is just like, Reptiles and amphibians, okay? Think about birds, think about everything underwater, think about mammals, think about just so many different things that you need to learn. I mean, I learned new things about animals that I've had for 15 years, 10 years, you know, five years. You know, I learn new things about them every single day. So you can never, uh, never stop learning. And that's one thing I love about working with animals. It's just nonstop, nonstop. Just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going. So maybe when I'm like 50, they'll give me a TV show. I don't know. Don't really care. I love it. I would love to get on a bigger platform to educate more to like a broader audience. But in, in the meantime, I'm still going to go travel and still try to broaden the audience myself. I'm not going to just wait for uh, anybody. You only get one life, you know, especially the life um, that I live. It's a... Uh, Never, nothing's never promised for tomorrow, you know? Um, let's see. Let's see. 
Hey, bro, do you do any kind of tours of your sanctuary? I will be in Florida in two weeks. I would love to link. Actually, yes. Um, probably around the end of the summer, um, hopefully around July, maybe August, I will have um, a public place where you guys can have private tours for animals that are my personal collection. Um, and uh, hopefully we can get everything sorted out fast. Again, we're still going through the process of, you know, again, opening to the public. It's a, it's a big thing, you know. You have a lot of animals that are, they're not just, uh, it's not just a pet store, you know, or just like, uh, I'm not saying there's anything that's pet stores or anything, but like these are my, these animals are my kids, you know, my, these are my life. So if I'm going to present to the public for people to come visit them and see them, you know, I want to make sure everything is tip top and in shape, you know, um, as far as enrichment. Um, caging requirements, enclosure requirements. I want to make sure everything is done over the top. I mean, you guys have seen me build other things before. Um, you know, for my animal. Hey, easy, man. You guys have seen me build um, habitats for my animals before. And you guys know I like to build, build them big, you know, build them, build them tall, build them high, you know, different water sources. So I learned a lot over the past couple of years, especially the last two years during the pandemic. I spent a lot of time. Home Depot and, hey, hey, quiet, man. There's some little dog barking outside. He's wanna, he doesn't want to bother you. But, yeah, um, spent a lot of time at Home Depot. Um, spent a lot of time online looking at other people's stuff, how they're building their stuff and, you know, trying to expand my stuff. So it's a, it's a, it's a process, you know. So for me to open to the public, um, I want to really uh, – I got a big team I'm working with now um, that we're putting our brain together to build some – sick stuff hopefully you guys just won't be able to visit you guys may even be able to rent an airbnb for the weekend or for the week if they're available because i know they're going to go out quick so um from charitable stuff to um breeding projects to airbnbs to you know special needs kids coming to get some therapy with animals i mean we're going to have literally every single thing you could think of um that could be in a positive force with animals involved for you guys so stay tuned on that i've been i've been working on that for a while now um it's a it's a it's a lengthy project if, it, if it's done right i mean i can open up pretty quick but you know again i i want to make sure stuff is done the right way um and with the right people and with the right goal the end goal in mind you know uh, it's hard to get everybody on the same page especially people that you work with that don't have um an animal background, you know, you got to have people that have the same uh, heart in it with animals and not just money, you know, because the, the, the reality is nobody really makes money with animals, you know, it's all about the animals. Animals are costly, food is costly, supplies are costly, you know, um, veterinary costs are costly, you know, um, animals are costly, time spent, the time spent is costly, you know, so um, if you don't have that time, that mental time for animals, you know, we gotta make sure we're on the same page. So again, soon we'll have a lot of stuff opening for the public for you guys. Hey man, leave that dog alone. He's just barking at the moon or something. Uh, how did you get so involved all over the world with animals? Um, I just started traveling uh, about four or five years ago. Um, uh, I went to uh, Mexico first on a cruise, like part of a cruise line, and then um, I saw some spying tail iguanas there. I saw some uh, some cool marine life, and then I left there. I went to Bahamas, um, and then I didn't really see many reptiles there, but I did see um, some some nurse sharks and some sea turtles and stuff like that. And it was real cool, man. And I was like, wow, I really got to get out more, you know. And then um, I ended up going on a trip to Costa Rica like on a whim, you know, like, I don't know, it was like a Tuesday. And then the person I went with was like, hey, let's go to Costa Rica, like tomorrow on Wednesday. And I'm like, I don't even have a passport. How do I, you know? So on the cruise ship, you can just use your ID and go and come back and you need your passport. But uh, when I got on the uh, to Costa Rica, it was uh, it's a whole nother level of adventure. You know, uh, I left the airport went straight it was actually really weird because i didn't really I, this is my first time again flying out of the country um and uh, we flew straight straight from uh, miami to costa rica and then um we left the airport and 
got in a random car, which was probably a horrible idea. Um, and we went to this random car rental place that was like maybe 30 minutes away in an alley. And then I had to give this guy my ID, some money. And he gave us this little, little ass like Toyota Corolla. And then we took the car and drove. Um, I had no service there. So um, they gave us a GPS. You would put your address in and stick it in the window, old school style. And uh, then we took the GPS and we drove all the way to the hotel, which is now 30 minutes away. Um, we got, uh, you know, settled in. And then that next morning um, at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., we hopped in the car and we drove to like Arena Volcano. Uh, we drove over to uh, uh, Yako Bridge where all the big crocodiles are. We went down to um, Manuel Antonio National Park. It's a big rainforest over there with some like mountains and stuff. And it goes into a beach. We saw a bunch of capuchin monkeys. Um, saw a ton of uh, sloths hanging up in the trees. They had these, um, these, these, these tour guides that would sit on the trails with these big binoculars and you can look up high in the canopy and see these, these, these sloths up there. So it was really cool. We saw two cans in my car. So um, I actually went on another tour through, uh, what is this name of this park? I always like to remember these names. Um, Manuel Antonio. Arena Volcano, Chaco Bridge. Uh, I'm having someone help me. Uh, it's another another park in Costa Rica, not too far from Yaco. Uh, it's not Manuel Antonio. Someone help me. Somebody help me, please. Somebody, somebody help me, please. I can't get it out of my head. Anyways, um, I'll remember it later, probably like. In the middle of the night, I wake up and <laughs> know the name of it. But um, yeah, we went on this little tour through this uh, nature trail, and uh, there's a bunch of people on this on this tour with us. Maybe like six people, six seven people in front of us. And um, the person was like, "Oh my God!" We walked over this little bridge. I mean, it's like a little creek down below, probably like a ten foot drop. And uh, the person was like, "Oh my God! It's a snake over there!" And I'm thinking they're lying, you know. So, I mean, I look over and there is a big like six foot snake just chilling like taking a sip of water so i took my backpack off um i didn't have my shirt on anyway i had already had mosquito spray so <coughs> i hopped over, <laughs> excuse me i hopped over the railing and just jumped down and these people were like everybody was screaming like oh my god this guy just jumped in the river um i mean the river wasn't deep maybe like maybe like a foot you know hopped in the river i walked over to the snake i pinned him down i didn't even know what it was and i picked him up and i'm like yo uh, long story short, it ended up being like a six foot tropical bird eating snake. It's a colubrid. Um, I really thought it was, uh, I actually didn't know what it was because it was like, when I first walked up to it, I was like, man, is this snake in shed? Sometimes, if you guys don't know, I uh, have snakes. Uh, a lot of snakes, they get like this, like this blue, pink, milky, like, you know, coat over their body and their eyes go a little cloudy, you know, and, you know, that's, that happens right before they're getting ready to shed their skin, you know. Um, so I saw the snake and it had like this, 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 this milky presence. And I'm like, man, it's this guy, either, either he's sick or he's in shed. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, yo, this guy, I, I, you know, after I pinned him and grabbed him, I'm like, yo, this guy is flawless. He wasn't in shed or anything. Um, and then later on when I had service, I realized it was a tropical birdie day snake. I never even seen this snake in my life. I heard about, um, different, uh, species of, you know, colubrids that would, that would be arboreal, you know, from, all over Central South America, but the tropical birdie snake, I got, I, apparently I got real lucky because not many people see it, see those snakes in the wilderness, you know, especially on a trail, you know, that's a popular trail, you know, these animals are uh, always high up in the trees eating a tropical bird eating snake. What do you think bird eating snakes live? They live in the canopy where people don't walk on the ground at, you know, so um, yeah, man, it was a really cool experience. And after that, man, um, I got the bug. I got the bug of traveling, you know. I spent all my money, all my time thinking about traveling. And um, I left Costa Rica, went to Honduras. Um, I met my buddy Jeff there, that you guys see all my crazy photos with. My best friend, Jeff Vinax, he's uh, actually out in, where is Jeff at right now? I think he's in Denver, shooting some crazy content. I mean, Jeff is the GOAT, man. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, videographers and photographers out there. Um, but I feel my crew of my crew of shooters, 
pound for pound the best. They can't be uh, they can't be asked with, you know. Um, not many people out there can uh, shoot content underwater. Um, not many people can shoot content underwater and on land. Not many people can shoot content underwater and on land and shoot drone footage. Not many people can shoot underwater, on land, drone footage, and edit everything in the same day. So, I mean, also too, like these guys are gangsters. You know, Jeff swims with crocodiles. Jeff holds big ass pythons in the middle of the jungle. You know, Jeff Jeff does, does it all. Jeff fights. You know, he whoops my ass and everybody else's ass and goes to the gym. Jeff's like six foot three, two hundred and eighty pounds, and he's like fucking Viking from Latvia. So. Yeah, he's uh, he's awesome. We met up in Honduras like five years ago, and uh, we I mean we caught boa constrictors, we hung out with jaguars and sloths and spider monkeys and caught tarantulas at night. I mean, you name it. We hung out with the locals. Um, Jeff had his first beer over there. Um, me and Tail, you know, went to Seychelles and went to Tiger Beach in the Bahamas, swim a shark. I mean, just tons of stuff. I mean, the Earth Day pictures I posted yesterday. Um, that you guys can see on my profile right now after I, we get off alive, of you'll see I posted a series of like on land photos and then underwater photos. Those th those two sets of photos, um, it's about 20 photos. I think like 18 or 17 of them came from Jeff and Teo. Um, I think one other photo came from this guy named Tim McKenna. And I think that's it. So uh, yeah, man. And from again, going to Costa Rica, Honduras, been to Panama, I've been to Belize, I've been to Mexico a couple of times, I've been to Brazil, um, I've been to uh, Galapagos, I've been to Ecuador, um, I've been all over Africa, not all over Africa, but I've been to Uganda, I've been to South Africa, I've been to Kenya, I've been to Cape Town, I've been to Egypt, I've been to uh, Seychelles, uh, in Australia, uh, in, uh, Fiji, Bora Bora twice, Hawaii, I mean, I mean, tons of places, man. I've been, it's been a dream come true, man. It's straight up, straight up blessing that I, I, I lived a thousand lives that I can't, you know, I can't even, I can't, I have zero complaints. I know, you know, I can be going through uh, all types of crazy stuff, but I just look at the positive side of life and I thank God for, you know, just giving me everything he's, he, he's blessed me with from the smallest to the biggest things, you know? So, uh, yeah, man, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a non-stop journey. We all, we all got a ways to go. And uh, I'm happy you guys are following along and been supporting this whole time. You know, some stuff happens slower than other things, you know, because I'm stupid, <laughs> you know. But, um, yeah, someone has another question. I'm just ranting along. It says, uh, just wanted to say big thank you, big inspiration. I'm starting to study zoology and herpetology in September at one of the best universities for my course of study. Thank you for inspiring me to push for my goals. Yo, Danny, uh, and Danny Lee Scarborough. Yo, God bless you, Danny. Um, it's always been a dream of mine to go to school. Um, at the time where I was going to school, I had, I had the time and to go to school. Um, like when I got out of college, when I got out of high school in 2011, um, I played football at this, uh, this college in North Georgia in like LJ. And uh, I played for I played for one semester, and my main my main focus was I really want to get to school and become um, a zoologist, a herpetologist, and a botanist, um, and also study primatology. And uh, I didn't have the funds to go to school. I didn't have the grades to go to school. Um, when I was in school, um, in high school, I would go to my teachers, and some of them I got along with really well because. You know, I would just keep it real with them. You know, I would go to school and it probably wasn't the best idea for me to do it because I'm so hard headed. Um, I'm a more receptive now to information from my elders and, you know, my course of life. But back then I was just a stupid little kid. I mean, I'm still a stupid kid now, a stupid young man now. But back then um, uh, I would go to school and I'm like, look, I am going to be working with animals. So. Mr. Math teacher, I don't care about the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, Miss Language Arts teacher, I just do not care about Romeo and Juliet. It's a cool story, but I just really don't care about it, you know? So stop, like, I'm going to get a 7 in your class to pass, but other than that, like, I just don't care, <laughs> you know? But I had, you know, uh, I had like a 90, 92, 87, 
in my, all my uh, um, uh, science classes from biology and chemistry and all that stuff. So earth science is just this is my thing. You know, um, by the time I got to college, I didn't I didn't have any money for school. So I said uh, after I played one semester of football, I went out to leave school and I moved to Florida. I worked at a pet store in Georgia for a while, and then. Um, Long story short, I'm proud of you, Danny. I'm just rambling. Uh, I really wish I can go to school right now. Um, I can't um, at the moment. But I was talking to my aunt a few days ago. I would love to actually go to school in like the next two, three years. Um, and you know, I think I think me having a a time in my life where I can get a degree in uh, anything, you know, go to school and learn from actual professionals and you know, read. Also, with the knowledge I've already accumulated, I want to have actual more knowledge from actual professors to and people that have studied just one species or one set of animals. You know, I want that. Uh, I want that experience in my life. You know, I don't think uh, I will be able to fully say that I completed. You know, uh, all my goals and tasks because one of my goals is since a kid was to be a herpetologist, and you can't be a herpetologist if you don't go get a herpetology degree. Um, at, at this point, uh, I am an enthusiast, you know, I'm, um, I'm an animal enthusiast and, and uh, I don't even think I have a profession. <laughs> I'm self-employed. I'm an entrepreneur, as you, people would say. Um, but yeah, so I'm proud of you. Keep it up. Um, if you need anything from me, hit me up. I got you. I see your stuff. I see everything that comes through. So, you know, God bless you. I got a few more and then I'm going to hop off. I got stuff to do. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, you guys ready for this one? Let's see. <laughs> uh, is it going to work? Are you there? Can't hear you. Hola, como estas? We can't hear you. Can't hear you. You may have to take your headphones out or something. But uh, yeah, we can't hear you. We can see you. We just can't hear you. So. Um, well, whatever Laura is saying, I'm pretty sure she's saying some nice, fun stuff for everybody out there, like Ola more or like, you know, yeah. So, to habla espanol, poquito espanol, ah, oh, she's gone. But yeah, um, yeah, we can't hear you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add you. Nobody can hear you. But yeah, so I appreciate sure you guys like that one. Um, my snake is over here just chilling, like literally laying on. Look at this. What are you doing, girl? You guys see this? this look at this face. Look at this face. You guys see this face? Oh my goodness. What a freaking cutie patootie. Um, yeah, so let's try this again. Hola. Ah, there you go. Hola. <laughs> Hola, papi. Hola, como estas? I have, I have, I have a present for you. Hola, como Hola, esta? mamacita. Mamacita. Hola, como, hola, como estas? Muy bien, mamacita. gracias. Mam tu hermosa esposa. ¿Qué te pasa? Ay, hey, yeah, you have, a, you have, a, 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 Cleo. Like... I love Cleo. Huh? So I miss my Cleo. What are you up to over there? How's the Hawaii? Get, tell us how Hawaii is. 
Tell everybody how good your English is. And um, yeah, give us, a, give us your experience. You saw some sea turtles, huh? See. Uh, but I can't, I can't talk in a lot um, in English because I'm not so good. But uh, Hawaii is amazing. It's beautiful. I love my favorite island is Honolulu, Waikiki, and the Maui. Maui is super nice. I have a lot of mountains. Now I'm here in the big island, but mm, I don't like a lot because it's raining a lot. So it's raining. Oh, baby, it's raining. So whatever. <laughs> Got jokes. Uh, and I'm look like one cinnamon. 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 Yeah, you look like cinnamon. See. Si. Everybody, everybody thinks you're uh, you're you're Russian or something, you know, but they don't know no. you're straight up Spanish. Now you look cinnamon. Oh, I it. am from Colombia. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> When I'm, everybody's like, oh, she speaks English super bad, but what do you want about me? <laughs> I was living in Miami, I was from Colombia, I speak Spanish, just I'm learning uh, English for talking with Michael. Michael teach me English, so yeah. if you don't want, if you do you think I'm speaking English super bad, it's because he teach me this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, when I met you, you didn't speak any English at all, so, like, we were talking through Google Translator for a little bit. Uh, I mean, we still do to this day. But okay, <laughs> but, let's but go you, into talking in Spanish. English has improved. Your English let's has improved go, a lot. Let's go into talking in Spanish. I'm so. Que mi amor. Que mas. Que hace. mamacita. Que hace. Tranquila, mamacita. Que haces. Cubo. Bien. De, 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 ¿Dónde está? Estoy en Hawaii. ¿Y tú? Miami. ¿Dónde naciste? ¿De dónde eres? ¿De dónde eres? Soy África. Ok. ¿De dónde eres? De Colombia. Pereira, Cartagena. Pereira. Pereira. Oh. ¿Qué más? How many, uh, how many, how many uh, major cities are there in Colombia? You got Bogotá, Cartagena, Pereira. Uh, I was I born in Girardot. I was living for a lot of years in Pereira, but uh, I know Cali. I, I don't know Medellin, Cartagena, Barranquilla, um, Barranca Bermeja, Barranca Bermeja. Uh, Barranca Bermeja. Hey, what was that? What was that? What was that long word you taught me? Um, damn, it was like done with the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that. Let, let's do that again. I need some. I need some help. External Clayto Mastudeo. External Clayto Mastudeo. Sí. <laughs> external Clayto Mastudeo. Sí. Yeah. What else? What else? Um. Derecho, derecha. No, 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 no. Izquierda. No, 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 no. Derecha. Izquierda. Derecha. Derecha. Izquierda. 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 Bro, which way is it? I just said this way, this way, this which way is it? Right. Derecha. Left. Izquierda. Derecha. Up. Arriba. Ah. Caminar. Conducir. Conducir. Ay. Walking is coming out. Po poquito español. So, you know, I'm speak English so good. If, if the relationship is because Michael speaks Spanish, I, I, I don't think so. That's what they got of communication. Oh, yeah. So, um, I have, uh, I have like literally like 2% left on my, uh, on my phone. So, uh, I'm going to hang up. Thank you for joining us on live today. Um, you're very, very uh, gorgeous over there. You look nice and cinnamon. You know, I like cinnamon rolls, <laughs> so uh, you keep that tan going, you know? Because uh, I'm look, you look I delicious. Yeah, you look you look delicious, you know? Do you like want to a, test it? <laughs> tres leches, cuatro leches, or something? Do you want to test it? I'm like, I'm look like three leches with cinnamon. Mm-hmm. 
L- little bit of flan on the side. What did oh, they say? Yeah. Oh yeah, a little bit of flan on the side, you know, something. A little malakuya. See ya, more meal. All right, ciao, ciao, Vida. Ciao, mi amor. That boy's like my Spanish. That shit's nice, right? Espanol, Miguelito. All right, y'all. We talked about animals. Answer some questions. It's been a great day. Love y'all. I'm out. I got stuff to do. Enjoy your Saturday. Tyson Fury's fighting tonight, so I'm gonna go watch some fights. And, uh, yeah.